guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been such a long time since I posted any videos. However, I promise I've been super, super busy. So some of you guys may or may not know I do weddings for a living. So I'm always doing bridal hair and makeup look on the daily. <laughs> Wedding season is just beginning and I thought it'd be kind of cool to share how I actually do makeup on a bride. So this beautiful gal is actually one of my dear friends. She married one of my great friends and they both got married recently and I did her makeup. She definitely wanted a dramatic yet classy look and this is what we're going for. So starting off with her eyebrows, as you can clearly see, she has them tattooed on. So they're nicely shaped and groomed. So what I'm going to do is just fill in the sparse areas with a little bit of a pencil and a pomade. Taking a mascara spoolie and I'm just grooming her brows. So of course I'm going to prime her lids, getting them ready for shadows. Before we actually get into the shadows, what I'm going to do is shape her brows. Now, like I mentioned, she does have nicely shaped and groomed brows, but this is just going to highlight the highest points, which is her arch. It just makes it a bit cleaner looking, but it's still very pretty. To set the remaining products from her eyebrows, I'm going to use a banana powder and it's just going to softly set it without having it really dramatic with a white or shimmery shadow. As always, I'm going to use a soft taupey color and this is going to help with the transition in the crease getting ready to build other shadows on her eyes. She is so adorable and she always giggles at everything. She is so cute. She's like a little cartoon character. And she loves coffee just like me! Going in with a soft mauve color, I'm just going to place this all over her crease and the outer corners. Now this is the time where you can create the shadows to more of a dramatic look. So I'm starting off with a deep dark chocolate brown and I'm just starting on the outer V's of her eyes. As you can see, I'm just kind of feathering the brush across her lash line, letting it sink in the eye socket on the corners and just slightly bringing it up to the crease. Now this will create a really smoky yet dramatic look where it's going to be the darkest on the outer corners but softly diffused towards the center of her eyes. Now this will make it more dimensional looking and of course it's going to give you that drama. So this portion, she's actually telling me what type of accessory she brought because we are doing a bridal updo after this, a shameless plug. You guys want to stick tuned? Stick tuned? You guys want to stay tuned for that? Basically, it's easier to add on than remove. So as you can see, I'm building up the brown color and just blending out to the desire of smokiness that I want. Flipping that double-ended brush over, buffing it out so it looks softly diffused and no harsh lines. Now I'm going to take a soft champagne kind of bronzy color, taking a flat shadow brush, patting this right on the inner parts of her eyelids, but I'm not overlapping on her outer crease. Using a really detailed brush like this can really focus the shape on her eyes. She definitely has an eyelid and has that crease, beautiful eyes, almond, so it's easy to just kind of follow the pattern. But using a flat detailed brush like this one here, it actually makes your work look a bit cleaner, especially around the eyes.
after blending everything out, this is a random color, but I'm taking this soft kind of yellowy color and I'm going to softly diffuse this right at the crease. It just softens up the look a little bit and there's no line of demarcation in between the shadows. She was laughing about her little baby hairs here. <laughs> I understand, girl. I got a lot of them. <laughs> I wanted her eyelids to be a little bit poppin', so I'm taking this shimmery eyeshadow and it's so pigmented, as you can see, I'm just dabbing it onto each eye and I'm lightly feathering off the excess product. Now it's time to build the lashes with some mascara and of course some falsies. And I'm using this Too Faced Waterproof Better Than Sex Mascara for this look. Using one of my favorite brands, Cover Effects, I'm going to apply a little bit of this illuminating product so her overall face has a little bit of a luminosity but it's not going to be overly shimmery or crazy looking. It's just going to give her a natural glow. So I'm just taking a buffing brush and I'm just buffing all the highest points of her face and then I'm going to get ready for primer and then the rest of her complexion products. She was like, oh my god, I thought you were going to drip this all over my face like you see on Instagram. I was like, girl, no. I'm going to use a brush and apply it on properly. <laughs> and she was laughing. She also really liked the primer I used, which is the Gripping Primer. Also another goodie by Cover FX. This is an excellent primer, especially for bridal or longevity. It's actually really good. And look, Tofu is right there. <laughs> Here I'm using Bare Pro's new concealer. This is an amazing product. Now as I always mention many times that I choose a color that is slightly darker or more peacher than one's complexion shade just because this will help color correct those hues and it won't enhance them. If needed, you can go back with a coat of mascara or just gently crimp their lashes. This will help fan it up out of their vision so it's more comfortable to see and wear. Using another oldie but goodie, this is Becca's, I believe it's called Aqua or Luminous Foundation. It literally is a water-based foundation. It's so glowy. I mean, look at her skin. It's so soft and natural. She was like, what is that smell? She was like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. It could be my brush cleaner. It could be the foundation. And she was like, I think it's the foundation. And she loves this stuff so much. Going back in with that same banana powder, I'm going to set her T-zone, especially under her eyes. I try to stay away from translucent powders with darker complexions or women of color just because sometimes that white powder can leave like an overcast, whereas using a banana powder actually is a bit softer and still does its job. Yeah. 
Now contouring her features to bring them out and shadowing what's needed, she's kind of learning from me because she was like, I don't know how to properly contour. So it's just giving her little tips and tricks and what types of colors to use. Now I'm gonna go in with a blush and just highlight the apples of her cheeks. I normally have my clients smile, locate the apples of the cheeks and just softly feather it towards the highest points of her eyes, which is where the highlights will go next. So the fun part, highlighting. So as you can see, I'm using a tapered fan brush. I'm just highlighting the highest points of her face and I'm kind of making the C-shape section all around under her eyebrow bone, using just whatever's left over on that brush as a highlight and I'm not really focusing a strong highlight at her arch just because she has that matte soft color already. I'm going to let her lip balm hydrate a little bit, so I'm going to jump back to her eyes. Using a gel liner, I'm going to give her a nice winged on both sides. On the other eye, you can see I kind of made a little boo-boo there, but I fixed it. It's all about the angles. You can use tape if you need a guideline. I did not use any guideline, but I kind of angled it a little too high, but I did eventually fix it. You'll see with a little bit of concealer. Not too worried about that just because it's a more dramatic smoky look this time. So I'm going to go back in with a shadow as you can see, and it'll create a little bit of a softness on the outer corners. So going back in with my favorite ride or die liquid liner pen, even though if I did a gel liner already, I still go over the liner with this brush for fine detailing and just kind of sharpening up the look if needed. Now I'm going to start stacking lashes and instead of doing another strip adhesive, I'm actually adding individual ones on the outer corners just so her eyes look a bit fluffier without making it look too heavy or giving her a lazy eye. And I've been into stories so much. If you guys haven't been following me, please follow me. You'll see my crazy stories I try to post. Um, <laughs> and you'll see more of the bridal and makeup looks that I do every day. So I'm going to go in with some shadow, smoke out her lower liner, and just have it more dramatic looking. Sometimes
Now for the lips. I asked her what color she wanted and she chose red. And it's so funny because as you can see, I'm lining her lips and when I go in with the liquid matte lip stain, I actually kind of overline her lips a slight bit. And I said, I'm so sorry if I overlined it a slight bit. Red is just one of those colors you want your lips to look fuller in. She looked in the mirror and giggled and said, I would actually make it bare. <laughs> she is so cute. I'm using another Sephora Collections favorite. This is actually one of my go-to lip stains that I use for my brides. Their Sephora Collection Cream Lip Stains, again, 14 bucks, amazing deal, hydrating, great color payoff, and it lasts all day. So after we did the lips, I just kind of went back with a little brush and just kind of did fine detailings to give it that nice beautiful shape at her cupid's bow. Of course, I topped off her cupid's bow with a little bit of a highlight and that is it. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned as I have her bridal updo video coming up. I hope you guys had a great Valentine's Day. Stay tuned for my monthly favorites at the end of the month. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel, guys. I truly appreciate you guys and love you. All right, guys. Take a look at some still pictures of this beautiful gal and I'll see you guys soon.